Good morning, everybody. Um, very excited today to be presenting my first video to you guys. Um, this is something I want to try and do more often. Um, I'm not sure how often it will be, but probably at least once or twice a week. It's a way for me to kind of give you a little more direct help um, and to, you know, give a little touch on our Google Classroom here. Um, I hope everybody had a great spring break. Hope you had a chance to relax and kind of take your take your mind off of things a little bit. Um, I know this has all been a huge transition. This is, I'm, if I'm being honest, this is something that most kids don't go through. So you guys are, I mean, this is new territory for the whole world, for adults too. Um, never seen anything like this, so just give yourself a pat on the back. Right, you guys have all done such a great job adjusting, and I know me and your other teachers, we're all so proud of you. We really are. Okay. Now, yeah, I hope everybody's healthy, safe, and relaxed. But I do want to get started. I want to focus on math today. Um, we're going to do a small little review on proportions, but um, I do think... Um, from what I've seen, that most of the class is doing pretty well with those. So I do want to try and move into uh, kind of new content. It's related to proportions, building onto it. Um, in particular, we're going to explore proportional relationships with variables like x and y. But before we get there, let's first talk about proportions. As we've seen in class, as you should have seen in the videos, um, proportions are two equal, two equal ratios. Now, we use ratios when we're counting two or more types of things. So, for example, maybe we have our classic example of something like two apples, three oranges, and we know that we could write this as a ratio like this. And this is telling us that we have two apples. For every three oranges. Now, a ratio like this, this is um, this is something that we we're going to this the comparison of apples to oranges will always be the same depending on how much fruit we have, right? If this ratio is always the same. Then if we have, say, maybe, I don't know, eight apples, well, we know that two times four would give us eight, so that means that we have four times as many apples, so we'd have to have four times as many oranges. So we'd have to do three times four, and we get eight to twelve. 2 to 3 is the same ratio of apples to oranges as the ratio of 8 apples to 12 oranges. Okay. If I added 2 more apples, I'd have 10 apples, and I'd have to add 3 more oranges. So then I'd have, I'd have 15. All of these ratios are the same. So, if we're thinking about this as a proportion, well, 2 to 3, we know is equal to, some, to we said, 8 to 12. Well, maybe 
on your IXL, you got a question like this, where you had to find the missing value x. So maybe x is right here. Well, then you would go ahead and I gave you a couple different methods to find x, but we can see we've already done this work. X is going to have to be 12, right? For for these two ratios, 2 to 3, for, for 2 thirds to be equal to this ratio 8 over x, the only possible value x could be is this 12 here. All right, let's go to the next slide. So let's uh, let's take a look a little bit more of a look at proportions. Um, classic example of when you'd use proportions in the real world is something like cooking. Say you want to make. 10 servings of cookies. Or maybe just make this easy. We'll just say we're trying to make 10 cookies. If we want to make 10 cookies, well, that's going to take two eggs to do that. But say you don't want to cook just 10 cookies. Maybe you're trying to cook cookies for your class, right? You need 30 of them. Well, now you need three times more eggs as you do or as you did before right because we have to get from 10 servings to 30 servings of cookies well you have to do 10 times 3 to get 30 well we have to do 2 times 3 and that gives us 6 and that's all all this down here that's all I'm saying Right, that's what this is. We're just trying to make these fractions equal to each other. We're trying to find out what the missing value of x is so that that's the case. Now, sometimes the numbers aren't going to work out quite so nicely. So there's another strategy here that you're going to need sometimes. You need to know, you should know how to do both of these. Method one that I just showed you, this is probably quicker. This is probably a little, if you really understand fractions, this is probably easier too. But sometimes you're going to get numbers that are messy. This is not really a case of that, but it doesn't matter. We can still solve this in the, using this method, which is called cross multiplication. And that's where you convert your proportion, both these ratios, you convert them down to fractions like we see here. We're trying to find out how many eggs we need to make 30 cookies. If we know that it, two eggs will make us 10 cookies, well, to do that we can set up a proportion like we see here. And then you can cross multiply. All right. 10 times x so you see here, 10 times x, and then 2 times 30. Ten, we're going to set 10 times x equal to 2 times 30. That's what you're going to see on the next slide. So, 10 times x is just 10x, 2 times 30, 60. So we set these equal to each other and now we can solve for our missing variable. Now we want to get x all by itself. We want this all alone. To do that you follow this step and this will work every time with cross multiplication. You divide by that number next to x. In that case this is 10 so we divide both sides of the equation by 10. These cancel out, so this goes away. And then we have to do 60 divided by 10. Since these 10's canceled out, it leaves us with just an x on the left. And then on the right side, we have 60 divided by 10. Well, that's 6. 
and that's what we got before using method one. So no surprises. Okay. If you are still struggling with proportions, I suggest looking through some of the videos I posted before, maybe practicing some of the IXLs again, or you can reach out to me or Mrs. Dahir if you uh, if you're one of the students working with her. All right. Now I do want to move well further on with proportions because there's more we can do with them because. As you move on to math, you really need to start thinking about everything algebraically. And what I mean by that is you need to start thinking about things in terms of x and y. We've done that a little bit this year, and we'll do a little bit more going forward. But this is going to be the focus of today. Okay, so example one here. Every Sunday, Clayton and his friends get together to play their favorite board game, the Gems of Rowumba. Whoever collects the most gems wins. Players can earn gems by building mines. There is a proportional relationship between the number of mines Clayton builds, and we're calling that X, and the number of gems he earns which we're going to call y. So I know there's a lot of writing here, but don't let all this writing scare you. This is not really telling us too much. What what really matters here is that there's a proportional relationship. Okay? So whenever there's a proportional relationship, you need to start thinking equal ratios. Okay? Just like we talked about before. So that's what we're looking at. Now this looks a little different than what you're used to though. All right, we have a table here. This is this is definitely different. But it's not but it's not really in practice. And let me show you. So first off, as I said, a lot of this writing here, we don't really need to know it. Right? We got this is what matters. And this is really shown in the table. We know it's proportional. We're trying to write an equation. So at this point, we got all we need. I'm going to get rid of the words. I'm just going to look at this here. Because the rest of it, it's just, I don't like looking at it. Too much writing. So let's look at this table. And we're going to look at one row at a time. Okay, so remember, a row goes across like this, left to right. So, we see that in our first row, our x is 1 and our y is 4. What you need to think about is how do you turn a 1 into a 4 by, by multiplication. Well, hopefully that's pretty easy because we all should know that 1 times 4 is 4. Okay, so 1 times 4 gives us 4. Well, this is a proportional relationship. So that's telling us that this is going to be the case for every row here. Each row is its own ratio of x to y. Now you can think of this row as the ratio 1 to 4. This one is 5 to 20. 6 to 24, 10 to 40. They're all the same ratio. They're all equivalent. They're all, if you took these two and you wrote a proportion, well, you would find they're proportional. So that's what we're doing with this table. We're trying to see if this is, we know that this they're proportional so that this is always going to have to be the case. If we multiply x by 4, we're going to get y. 5 times 4, 20, 6 times 4, 24, 10 times 4, 40. And that's what we see here. So if we're trying to write an equation, well, 
all we're doing is we're multiplying our x values by 4. And that gives us y. So our equation is y is equal to 4x. y is equal to 4 times whatever x is. Right? 4 times when x is 1. Well, 4 times 1 is 4. Or if x was 5, 4 times 5, 4 times 5 would give us 20. So that's it. These are all equivalent ratios. Now, again, let's look at this next problem. And you should try it out. Try it on your own first. Um, it's slightly different, but you can still do it if you're, if you're paying attention. So I'm going to give you a minute to go ahead and at least try it. Um, pause the video here, and I'll check in in just a second. Okay, you should have tried out example two on your own. Um, I'm going to read through it first. While relaxing on her front porch, Susan notices a garden snail crawling on the sidewalk. Susan is amazed at how slowly the snail moves, so she starts timing it. This table shows the relationship between the amount of time in minutes that Susan spends timing the snail x and the distance in feet that the snail moves y. Okay, so I know that that sounded confusing. It sounded confusing just reading it. Okay? Don't don't get too worried about it. Okay? What are we what are we trying to solve here? That's always that's what you should always be asking yourself whenever you read a word problem. Well, do x and y have a have a proportional relationship? Okay? So what's going on here in the word problem? All these words, all they're saying is that Susan is basically timing how fast her snail is, how far it's moving in a certain amount of minutes. So what she finds is that the snail moves 24 feet after 12 minutes. Okay. Now we're going to assume if it's proportional, it's going to be going at that same speed. right? It's always going to be going, well, it looks like twice, it's going to move twice as many feet as there are minutes. right? Because we know 12 times 2 gives us 24. If these, if this table shows a proportional relationship between x and y, that's always going to be the case. And let's see if it is. 15 times 2, okay, that's 30, good. 16 times 2, 32, good. 30 times 2, 60. Okay, so that means that the snail is always moving at the same rate. It's not going any faster, it's not going any slower. It's moving 24 feet every 12 minutes. Or, in other words, it's moving twice as many feet as there are minutes. So you could say if it went, if she timed it for 50 minutes, how many, how many feet do you think it would have went? What do you think about that right now? If she timed the snail for 50 minutes, how far would it have went? Well, you should have gotten 100 feet, right? Twice as many feet as there are minutes. And we see this was always the case. 16 times 2, 30 times 2, as we talked about. So this is a proportional relationship, no doubt about it. All right, let's move on to example 3. Here's the slide, um, if you want to take a look at that. Okay, so example three, um, this one's a little bit harder. Um, this was one of the challenge questions, but no reason you couldn't do it. Um, at the Bloomington Summer Festival, Ashley is selling her animal-shaped cupcakes. Ashley had to buy the ingredients and pay a food vendor, food vendor fee. So she hopes she sells enough cupcakes to make a profit. 
This table shows the relationship between the number of cupcakes Ashley sells, X, and the amount of profit in dollars that she'll make, and we're calling that Y. So her profit's Y, and the amount of cupcakes she sells is X. So this is how much money she's making total after basically paying her bills. Okay? Right, like you don't get to when you sell something in the real world, you don't get to just keep all the money you make from selling it. You have to pay for, you know, maybe rent, or you have to pay to make the product in the first place. You have to pay your employees. There's a lot of different things. So what we're looking at here is profit, and we're trying to see if that she's making the same profit for every certain amount of cupcakes she makes. Okay. So if, let's look at this first row. When she sells 14 cupcakes, she makes one dollar. Doesn't seem very good, but that's what we're seeing. That's what the data is showing. Now we know 14. To turn that into a one, you would have to divide that by 14. And that tells us, you know, every 14 cupcakes she's making a dollar. We want to see if that's always the same rate. Okay, so that's telling us that she's really, yeah, she's really not making all that much money for selling 14 cupcakes. So if you look at the second row, this should already be raising a red flag in your head if you're thinking about it. She sells two more cupcakes and then makes 12 more dollars from that, to me, that seems pretty clear that she's not making the same amount of money for every cupcake she's selling. Right? It's, there's other things that are changing here. Right? So she's not making that same amount each time. But let's go ahead and try it out. Let's test it out with the numbers. And I have that on the next slide, or the next two slides. So we have to see if we saw in the first row, we know 14 divided by 14 gives us 1. If this is proportional, then every row, we should get the same thing when we divide by 14. This should All the numbers should check out. Well, let's try that. Okay, so the first row obviously worked, but the second row, 16 divided by 14, that's not 13. 24 divided by 14, that's not 61. 29 divided by 14, that's not 91. Right? So, this is not a proportional relationship. And I, I guess I didn't mention it, but we are using division here. And that's fine. That It works the same as multiplication because when you divide by 14, it's still really the same thing as multiplying by the fraction 1 over 14. But if don't worry about that too much, but that is why it works. Division works the same way as multiplication here. So we do see that this each row does not check out. Right? We had no, and it only takes 1. So therefore, according to the table, to the values in the table, X and Y do not have a proportional relationship. Okay, when she sells 14 cupcakes, she she's not always making one dollar. Okay, if this was true, if we thought about that, well, that would tell us that if she sold 28 cupcakes, we'd expect her to make two dollars. But you even see here. She sells almost 28 down here, 29, just a little bit more, and she made $91 from that. So there's no way that this first row matches up with the rest of the data. Okay? In fact, I don't think any of these really, I don't think any of the ratios are equal to each other. So hopefully this helps out. Um, again, we'll be talking more about proportions um, eventually either 
probably next week, maybe this week at the end, um, we'll get into percentages a little bit with proportions. Um, but for now, we're just going to keep practicing with it, um, keep exploring. So everybody, please stay safe. Take care. That's all I have for you today. Um, so enjoy the rest of your day.